Hello and happy Monday, sunshine. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10, here to help you fuel your mind and dominate this week and have a little fun while doing it. First, though, our lead story of the day, a hurricane with fierce winds and heavy downpours. It's forced residents in Southern California to evacuate and first responders to brace for water rescues as it was expected to slam into the U.S. coastline yesterday. Hurricane Hillary was a category one storm with maximum winds of 80 miles per hour at the time of this recording as it moved on a north northwest path at 21 miles per hour. It was expected to weaken to a tropical storm before reaching the coast, but large swells were likely to create life threatening surf and rip current conditions. The California governor's office said Hillary could be the wettest tropical cyclone in state history and one of the most devastating storms in more than a decade. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, said if Hillary makes landfall in California as a tropical storm, it would be the first to do so in the state in nearly 84 years. Storms like this rarely hit California because of the cold currents off the coast. They tend to weaken storms and act as somewhat of a shield around western coast there. Parts of California and even Nevada and Arizona could suddenly receive a year's worth of rain or more. So today I signed an emergency declaration, a proclamation in preparation of the storms. California Governor Gavin Newsom proclaimed a state of emergency Saturday for a large swath of southern parts of the state with up to 10 inches of rain expected in some areas. Winds were expected to knock out power for many on Sunday and Monday. Parts of Mexico, roughly a 300 mile stretch along the Baja California Peninsula, were also under hurricane warning with, quote, locally catastrophic flash and urban flooding, according to the Hurricane Center. CNN's Natasha Chen was in Southern California ahead of this rare storm's impact. This is a weather event that's created a lot of questions for people in Southern California because they have never seen a tropical storm warning. And the last time a tropical storm made landfall in California was more than 80 years ago. So a lot of people are wondering what exactly they should do. Officials have said a lot of the preparations that folks would have made for winter storms and flooding months ago apply here, asking people to please take advantage of the sandbags that are being given out to bring materials indoors to not go outside or drive in the weather on Sunday and Monday if they don't have to. Uh, officials have also been very proactive in going to outdoor areas where there are encampments of unhoused people trying to convince them to take shelter inside before the storm uh, really comes through. The most intense of which is supposed to be Sunday afternoon, at least through the San Diego area with very strong rains and winds. We are seeing a lot of events being canceled or postponed. In fact, Major League Baseball moved their Sunday games to Saturday. Uh, there are concerts like the ones at the Hollywood Bowl being canceled. The U.S. Navy has even temporarily moved their ships and submarines away from San Diego just during this storm, at least until it passes through. Uh, Catalina Island in Los Angeles County has been warned for people to, sh they're strongly encouraged to leave that island, that they're likely to get hit. Uh, a lot of high water rescue vehicles pre-positioned, a lot of personnel out there ready to act as soon as this weather comes through. In the U.S., flash floods kill more people than tornadoes, hurricanes, or lightning. A flash flood creates a rush of moving water that can sweep a grown man off his feet, a car off the road, and even your entire home off its foundation. When the ground becomes so saturated that water can no longer seep into the soil, it begins to run off quickly into rivers and streams, and this causes a rise in water and a flash. Densely populated areas have an extremely high risk of flash flooding with the additional concrete and less grassy areas for the water to soak into the soil and they can see flash flooding very quickly. In mountainous terrain, the combination of gravity plus the easy runoff can lead to catastrophic flooding when all of that water is funneled into rivers, creeks, and even the valleys. Remember, flash flooding can happen in the blink of an eye. That's why it's important to stay alert and pay attention in case a flash flood watch or warning is issued for your area.
10 second trivia. Which of these locations would be found on the moon? Plain of Jars, Sea of Tranquility, Crater Lake, or Mount Olympus? All of these sites are actually located on Earth, except the Sea of Tranquility. Chosen for its smooth, flat terrain, the Sea of Tranquility was the site of the first moon landing by the U.S. in 1969. But did you know that there's a new space race going on between the United States, China, India, and Russia? And the big focus is landing on the moon's southern pole. Why the lunar southern pole? It's all about terrain and lighting. Large mountains and deep craters at the south pole of the moon create permanently shadowed and very cold areas that scientists believe could hold ice that would have valuable scientific information. But that terrain and those conditions make for a difficult landing. And on Sunday, there was a major setback for Russia's space program. Roscosmos, Russia's space agency, reported that their Luna 25 spacecraft crashed into the surface of the moon. This was set to be Russia's first lunar lander in 47 years. The pilotless craft would have been the first ever craft to land on the moon's south pole, but it went spinning uncontrollably while in orbit. So next up is India. India's pilotless craft is scheduled to make a lunar landing there just two days from now. India's last attempt to land on the moon in 2019 ended with that craft also crashing into the moon's surface. The US, well, they're aiming to be the first country to land there with a crewed mission planned for 2025. China, they're also hoping to land there before the end of the decade. As it stands, only the United States, the Soviet Union, and China have successfully soft landed anywhere on the moon. And for today's story, getting a 10 out of 10, we're hanging 10 with a silly marine mammal making waves in San Diego. It's become a bit of a celebrity among local surfers there who say it brings them pure joy. CNN's Jeannie Moose seals the deal. There's a rookie surfer off the coast of San Diego and all of the human surfers have given him their seal of approval. A moment of pure happiness for me. Jenny Kim gladly made room for this harbor seal pup on her surfboard. Day after day, he showed up at Pacific Beach and hung out with those who usually hang tan. Even marine experts like SeaWorld's Jenny Smith were mystified. For some odd reason, was hopping from surfboard to surfboard to surfboard. Definitely not normal. Harbor seals are usually standoffish, but this one was extra friendly, chill. Climbing aboard, rolling off. <laughs> Instead of being antisocial, he was in sync, riding the waves with abandon. The surfers named him Sammy after the children's book. Sammy the seal. The man who shot this drone footage, Ed Hartel, found the seal inspiring. In a time of darkness, this has been the light. SeaWorld San Diego's phone rang off the hook with calls about Sammy. Their rescue team checked on him and found him healthy. Why would he gravitate to surfboards? My first instinct was maybe there's sharks in the water. Sharks have killed seals and sea lions at this beach. But Jenny says Sammy seemed calm and unafraid. His face was really close to me as if he's, he was going to kiss me. Like Sealed not with a kiss, but a sniff. She posted on Instagram, never getting rid of this board. Such a magical moment of connection with the nature. When the Beach Boys said everybody. Everybody's gone surfing. Who knew everybody would include Sammy the Seal. Surfing USA. Finally, my favorite part of the day, special shout out to Lake County Middle School in Ridgely, Tennessee. Go Falcons! Fun fact about falcons, did you know that some falcons can see their prey from more than a mile away? And when they spot that prey, look out! They can swoop down with mind-blowing speed. A peregrine falcon named Frightful set the world record in 1999, diving down at 242 miles per hour. I love falcons. Rise up. See you tomorrow, everyone. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10.